everybody. Let's give God some praise. to know what you're going through. There is a power that is greater than the power of your hand. Shakaraba, shakaraba. Yes, God set you up for a breakthrough. God set you up to be a deliverer. God set you up to be a type of chosen. Oh yes, the battle is hot, but the victory is sure. And with that, we are going to invite the Ruach to come. In all his glory and all his power. Good night. Um, this is Prophetess Anna K. Wade. And this is the Lion of Judah prophetic ministry. We are called and unpicked by God for such a time like this. Amen. The entrance of God's word bring it light. And God is getting ready to do some victorious movement in the earth. And is waiting on the ecclesia to be activated. Mm -hmm. So tonight I'm going to be activating you because you need to be activated in order to go into your promise. Uh -huh. There are many things in you that needs to be awakening. I don't care what the concept you have about growth and development. God may have sent some people your way that they will, their duty was to teach you how to be developed, how to, to grow in the things of God. And you did not get your full as it relates to development and growth. So God sent me all the way here tonight to help you. Huh? 
yes, to activate your body, soul, and spirit in the realm of dependency of, on God because you are a part of the, 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 the body and the movement of God, the kingdom of God, the family of God. And God has a lot of fundamental things that he wants to use you to do in the earth and so the process to get there is one that is rigorous you have to go through a lot of training and because of that many of us want to back down many of us are getting tired when god said this is a part of the preparation for you to get into your prophetic promise so we are under a very prolific team on tonight if you look on my team it is entitled gaining access to the promise gaining access to the promise and at this time we're gonna bow in, in reverential awe and we're gonna invite the Ruach Kodesh to come we're gonna activate our human spirit and command and demand that our soul be subduated to the power of the Ruach in the prophetic name of Yeshua Amashaya Jesus the anointed one shall we pray right now and so father as we come before for you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus we know that prayer is the way we communicate with you and we know that prayer is basically a twofold thing we talk to you you listen and you talk to us and we listen father the night is far spent the days are at hand and now we are casting off the work of darkness and we are being clothed in the armor of light. And we are saying, Yavava, activate us. Makabo Satarabahaya. Eleboko Shatarabahaya. Ho Rabababa Sata. Ilobo Sata. Activate us. Hashanda Bahaya. Oroboko Soto. Activate us in destiny. Activate us in purpose. Mantle us with that supernatural mantra that enable us to fulfill all that you have spoken about us. In the prophetic name of Jesus. Can we go into the, the broadcast on tonight? Come on, lay hands on yourself and say, you know what? It is time for me to stop procrastinating. My destiny is too big for me to back down and to believe the lies of the enemy. I'm too anointed to be disappointed. I'm too anointed to believe what the devil is saying to me right now. I am going to believe all that God has spoken about my life and my prophetic destiny in the mighty name of, of Jesus. And so, Father, we thank you once again. I am Providence Anna K. Wade, and this is the Lion of Judah. <laughs> prophetic ministry huh? and if you're ready to be accelerated and if you're ready to go to another realm and dimension in the spirit this is the place to be on tonight I'm out with me for a few minutes while we break it down Makabo Shata Karabahaya hallelujah and see what God has for us in the name of Jesus, many of you are getting so frustrated because destiny is, is something that has to be pursued with passion. You have to have a passion for the destiny that God has called you for. And many of us, because we were once, you know, um, I'm, I'm so excited, hallelujah, and all of a sudden, you know, it's like we're, we're trying to force, you know, um, a lot of things and we're feeling that you know god if you have called me to do this i don't think i should be going through all this pressure i don't think i should be doing all of this god so you know what you need to do for me god since you're the one that called me hallelujah you need to give me access to whatever it is that you have promised i don't want to be fighting like this Halabashanda. But God has never given anyone the promise who don't have the ability, hallelujah, to fight 
for what they believe in. So in the Bible, we read very well about the story of Joshua and Caleb. Hallelujah. Joshua and Caleb were the two spies who brought back a good report and believe that God would help them to succeed and that they were the only men, hallelujah, in their generation that were permitted to enter into the promise. And so they are prerequisite for people who are called and anointed and appointed by God to enter the promise. Number one prerequisite that is that you never believe the lies of the devil. No matter what you're told, no matter what you see, giants in the land, halabashanda, all kind of things that will discourage you, that will cause you to faint because of the enormity of the things that you have to go up against when trying to possess your prophetic promise. But Caleb and Joshua had a different spirit. They did not care who was in the land. They did not care what it was about. They believed the voice of God they resisted the argument of the devil and they operated in a dimension of faith praise the name of Jesus so we want to look in, in, in contrast to many things that God has spoken to us. We have gotten so much prophetic word and there are so many things that are dear to block and to stop us from entering into the promise. In the, in, in, in the book of Numbers, there were two groups of Israelites. They were called the chief teams, one of each of the 12 tribes. They were dispatched by Moses to call out the land of Canaan for 40 days. And so God had a promise that he has given unto his people, but we had to be proactive. Israel had to be proactive. They had to get up, not only on the prophetic word, but they have to activate their faith in entering into the land of promise, to spy out the land, to see the strongholds of the enemy, to see how they could launch their attack to immobile, to de demobilize the enemy, to tear them down from their place of dominion. And so they were dispatched by Moses, hallelujah, to discover all the stronghold for 40 days because this land was a prophetic promise that will later be the home of the Israelite during the time when Israel were in the wilderness. So like you and I, Israel were in, in a place of barrenness, a place of unproductivity, a dry place, but they had a prophetic word from the Lord. They had a promise from God. And so this place that they were called to scout out, to map out, to investigate uh, was the place that will later be the land of their prosperity, the land of their um, 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 promise. So in the account of Exodus, we see that God had promised, hallelujah, so many things, particularly to this patriarch that we speak about him so profoundly. Hallelujah. All of us who know the story of Abraham giving up Isaac and then in the midst of the sacrifice as he was about to demonstrate his obedience and love to God, God sent an angel to block and to stop him and to say, now I know that you love me and you will give any anything for me. So you don't have to sacrifice Isaac. I will provide a lamb in the ticket for the sacrifice. I will give you a sacrifice. So, so God promised Abram that there would be a promised land for the nation to come out of his son Isaac. The, the land of Canaan which the spies were to explore. It was the same land of promise. Moses asked that they will go in and individually act Access the geographical feature of that land. He has to go in and map it out. The strength of the land, the number of the population. He wanted he wanted so much information because Moses was hallelujah, their prophet and their intercessor. Moses needed also for them to actually uh, um, see it, visualize it, that he will potentially take all these things that they have seen and take them to God in 
intercession. Moses needed to find out about the agricultural potential of the land. Moses needed to find out about the land's actual performance, its civil organization. He wanted to know whether or not the city were sighted city going up to the heaven, where the camps were, where the stronghold was, where the fortress recondition was. He was looking at the outlook on a larger scale. Makabo Shanda Bahaya. But like Caleb and Joshua, hallelujah, there are people on this forum right now. You're listening to what I'm saying and God has given you so many promises. But when you send the spies out to view the land, you see that there are a lot of mighty God giants in the land. Things that are confronting your fate that makes you feel like doom and gloom because the report of what you're, you're, you're getting in your spirit, the report of what people is saying in your economy, in your locality, in the government. It is not matching the picture of what you perceive that God was saying. So you become filled with doom and gloom because you have encouraged the report that gave you that kind of faintness of spirit, that kind of faintness of art. How many of you believe that the God of Caleb and Joshua who brought them into the land and give them success despite the report of the people is the same God that's gonna give you the land of promise in the prophetic name of Jesus but there is something that you need to understand and I want us to know that in order for us to occupy these kinds of territory we have to grow up in maturity as believer the concept of growing up is nothing new to the body of Christ all believers want to grow up want to be developed want to be mature it cannot take a novice or a, somebody with a cowardice spirit to go into a land that is promised prophetically to you and because of the giants they're going to stay covered these people will always run in the midst of the battle so we need to acquire this kind of strength and and and, and that indomitable spirit that Caleb and Joshua possess they possess that in Formidable spirit. They were up for change regardless of what it what is required. Can we go deeper in the prophetic name of Jesus? So the concept of going up in church and being developed is something that is not something new to us. But in this journey that God is taking us, we need both development of our body, soul, and spirit. We need to be independently aligned to the will of God, not just to a thing. We need to be aligned as individual to the will of God so that the process that will produce uh, the result that we need for the promise uh, will come alive in you. It must come alive in the prophetic name of Jesus. Uh, many of us are in that class where we are being processed uh, to go deeper in the things of God. And God has sent me tonight because God is doing an investigation in your spirit, body, and soul that will allow you to receive that indomitable inflow, indomitable spirit, the inflow of the indomitable spirit of God that will give you a fundamental launch of, of, of listen, it will deal with everything that has caused you not to be able to stand. You will be able to encourage yourself because your spirit will be sinking and syncopated with the, the spirit of God the spirit of God that is your teacher the spirit of God that is the discerner that will discern the course of the situation that surrounds you huh? and even though you're being stretched it will give you the capacity and the ability to carry what he is, is processing you for 
So we need some fundamental truth as an underlying burden that will deal with certain things in us that will cause when we come into certain regions and territories that God wants to give us as a possession, whether it's an economical territory, you're in the economy, you're strategically, um, I'm scouting up the place and seeing what is needed, what needs to be changed. You are seeing what some things that needs to be implemented. God sent me tonight that whether it's the economy that you're viewing, the ministry, your marriage, your gift, and your calling, all these fundamental elements that are out of course, that needs to come in alignment, only goes with the will of God. The reason why God put you there is because there are some things that God wants to bring in alignment and he's going to use you as that ray of hope, that arm of the Lord that will bring that thing out of alignment. So I'm here to encourage you and activate this class of believers that are going in to possess their prophetic destiny in the prophetic name of Jesus. What you first need to recognize is that you are functional in different dimension. You are body, soul, and spirit. Oh yes. And just like your father who is a triune God, Makabo Shata, who has different um, 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 personality and he has different way that he goes about doing his thing in oneness. So you have one body comprises of the body, soul, and the spirit that God wants all these parts of you uh, to come in alignment. When they are in alignment, then you can see the things that the spirit wants you to see. The Holy Spirit will be the one that is taking premium minions over your spirit and your soul will not be accusing your spirit, causing your spirit not to be able to function in the deep things of God. No, you were created with a mind and the Holy Spirit want access to that mind. If those people that went into the promise, as we read about Caleb and Joshua just now, if they had a mind that was controlled by the Holy Spirit, it didn't matter what kind of burden of what they see, hallelujah, by means of necessity was placed on them because they have the mind of the Holy Spirit, because they have the power of God in their mind, they will not retire, they will not retrograde, they will not run away, but they will push under the pressure to have access to the promise. Am I prophesying in the name of Jesus? So many of us are backing down and we're saying, I don't believe that God really said this because what I'm seeing is in contrast to what God is saying. I need some more understanding. I need to go deeper. And this is what this session is geared for. It is geared to take you into that place, that realm. It is geared to pull you out of the soulish realm to cause you to launch deep into the realm of the spirit where you will have access to greater things in the spiritual realm. Now when we read the Bible in Genesis in, in, in Revelation chapter 1 verse 9 to 11 from the King James Version, I noticed something very profound about John the Revelator. The Bible says that John who is our companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and in the patient of Jesus Christ, he was in the oil of Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. John says, I was in the spirit on the Lord day and I heard a voice of the Lord like a trumpet. I heard a voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches that are in Asia and to Ephesus and Smyrna and to Pergamos, Titeria, Sardis, to Philadelphia and to Ludusi, um, um, Laodicea. 
So John was still in the earth realm, but John positioned his spirit in a realm and dimension that from that realm he could actually see the things that are taking place in the heavenly. Kadosha Baba, what are you saying? I am saying that it's time for us, hallelujah, to come out of the soulish realm that our gifting and calling in us, all the gift that is stored up in us can be utilized in this realm and dimension. John understood how to shift his attention or his consciousness in the mind, hallelujah, to that spiritual realm, gleaming and leaning on the mechanism that he practices, hallelujah, when he was developing his spiritual gifting. John says, I was in the spirit. He was able to open up himself to heavenly encounters. How many of you need to open up yourself to heavenly encounter? If you want to get in the flow of what God is doing, you must be in the frequency of the Spirit. John said, I was in the frequency of the Spirit on the Lord's day. And I saw the heaven were open. And I begin to see things in the revelatory realm. Can I prophesy? We, in order for us to possess the promise we cannot go up in our carnal flesh we cannot go up in the soulish realm this call for deep encounter with God this call for heavenly encounter with God himself the reason why we are not experiencing the tremendous flow of God's blessing is because our body is saying one thing our soul is saying one thing our spirit is saying one thing we need them to synergetically merge together in one Ness like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Can we go deeper in the name of Jesus? The reason why John could experience so tremendous flow because all of him was encapsulated by the Spirit. John said, "I was impressed to be elevated. I was impressed to go deep. I am impressed to go wide. I am seeing visions. I am launching into the deep of the Spirit. Hallelujah." We need to understand that we can do this when we learn how to subdue, hallelujah, the, the soul and allow the spirit to lead us. For the Bible says that they that are led by the spirit, they are the sons of God. John the Revelator shifted his soul and he shifted his spirit. It is possible for every one of us that is under the son of a prophetic voice to get these godly encounter. The only difference with John and us is because John has the understanding how to function in this dimension of the spirit. There are different realms and different dimensions. The apostle Paul says I was in a dimension that I heard arguments. I heard language that was not conducive for me to utter Kadusha Bakatala Idopo Shakanda Dabaha. So, in order for us to possess the promise that is over our lives that seems so impossible to obtain, we got to get the soulish realm on the subjection. And we got to cause our spirit to merge with the Spirit of God in order to illustrate that you newness of the functionality of the Holy Spirit. That is the overlying rules that is what we need to go into the promise. God wants people that are endowed heavily with the Spirit of God. Their spirit is working in sync with His Spirit. The soul have no conversation in this. The soul will not take over this. This is between you and God. No wonder the Bible says in Romans chapter 6, 8 verse 6, from the NIV version for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace why the carnal mind cannot grasp the thing of the spirit and even if it does grasp the spirit thing it begins to fight the carnal mind will not 
comprehend it will not be subjugated it will not be still it will always raise up to fight so to be carnal minded meaning you are fleshy minded oh yes that produces death but when you're spiritual minded it, it yields to life and peace can we go deeper in the prophetic name of Jesus so when we are spiritual enough and when we are mature and developed and we're saying you know what soul you will not take over this this belongs to the spirit I am I am I am I am synchronizing my spirit with the spirit of God the Bible says in first Corinthians 2 verse 15 but he who is spiritual judge all things yet he himself is rightly judged by no one and so if you find yourself living in a time when you said everything after bring it after bringing through this kind of scanning because i want to make sure i have made so mistake providence anna i want to make sure whatever i'm doing in this season that god stamp it god approve it god got his name on it i don't want to spend another time going around in circle i don't want my destiny to die oh I want to live in the abundance of the overflow. Teach me, Providence Anna, what was the difference between Caleb and Joshua versus the other people. The difference between Caleb and Joshua, hallelujah, is that their spirit was aligned. Their spirit was aligned, beloved. Makabosha. They are saying whatever God said because we have proven God in the past. And we know we serve a God that cannot lie. We know that whatever he speaks, it shall come to pass. We know that he will not alter the things that has gone out of his mouth. The Lord said to tell you, there are situations that you are facing. There are circumstances that you are facing now that wants to alter the word of God over your life. It wants you to conform. But if you're under the sound of my voice, be like Caleb and Joshua tonight. We are not conforming. We are not reforming to what the time are saying. We're not reforming to what the economy is saying. We are going to prophesy exactly what God says. But because God is a superior authority, every other thing has to bow. It has to be subdued and come in alignment to the perfect will of God. Who am I talking to? In the name of Jesus. Let me raise one prayer point before we go deeper. Say after me, oh Lord my God, activate my spirit uh, like the spirit of Caleb and Joshua. That though there are giants in the land, I will not turn back, I will not relent. Uh, I will believe you, God, in the name of Jesus. Can you begin to raise that prayer point? Even though there are giants in the land, there are situations that arises that want me to turn back. Uh, there's so many questions in my mind to wonder if God has spoken. But because there are a lot of, lot of biblical narrative, I've seen where God have given people that was nothing. They had nothing and he supernaturally gave them things. I see where he take people that were in the back, put them at the front. Hallelujah. I see where God turn. Oh God, fisherman into God man, into evangelists and apostles. I see where God turn. Man Kabosha, the shepherd boy into a king an orphan into a queen and the list goes on of nobodies that God turned into, pe in, in, into people that are sought after. Huh? No wonder the Bible says that he will make you a name and a praise into every land that you have been put to shame. So when God gives you a promise irrespective of what you see, hallelujah that is haunting you something want to make you feel like I'm not good enough. I wonder if God has spoken. God sent me all up in your face to decree the decree of the Lord. It's not time to back down Rabakusa. What you need is your spirit to be activated. You need to judge the voice that is speaking to you. Anything that is speaking contrary to what God said
according to judgment. Rebe Shadabahaya, operate as your own prophet. Scan everything that is coming in. What you allow will be allowed. What you disallow will be disallowed. In the prophetic name of Jesus, the scripture to back that of the Bible says, whatever you bind on earth, I bind it in heaven. You are my earth legislator. You are superimposing my will and purpose in the earth realm. So whatever you disallow to take place in the earth, I am saying it cannot operate in the heaven. Who am I prophesying to? God said, whatever you disallow in the earth realm, I disallow in the heavenly. Whatever you allow in the earth realm, I allow it in the heavenly. What God wants you to do is to be activated so that your spirit will come in unison with the spirit of the Lord so you can step into the dominion of power that when you walk into a place no weapon form against you will prosper God will deal with them with the breath of his nostril God will just look on an enemy and they will collapse because God is protecting your faith God will just look on an enemy and they will collapse who am I talking to God will send the word touch not my anointed do my prophet no harm God will take the battle over and say you sit down this battle has come, become supernatural it's no longer you fighting but I myself is fighting Rabo Shadabai on your behalf in the prophetic name of Jesus when God formed Adam from the dust, God breathed into his nostril the breath of, of God, which in Hebrew is called Nishama. Nishama means life. Adam became a living soul. Hallelujah. According to Genesis 2 verse 7. Eloborosha. Adam was just there in his human form, lifeless, not having any power, nothing. But the moment Nishama, the breath of life came up on Adam. Adam became a living soul. Start talking back to God. I prophesy. I legislate that tonight the very breath of God will come up on you. Neshama will overtake you. Neshama will encapsulate you into realms and dimension of the spirit. Can I prophesy? Many of you fear I've crippled your spirit. Fear has shut you down. Fear has caused you to be inoperable. Fear is literally paralyzing your faith. But I'm here tonight to unlock you. God says you must go into the promise by fire, by force. This promise that God has given to you, it's not negotiable. God saw you a long time. According to Psalms 139 verse 16, 14 and 15 to 16, David says, in my unformed stage, you knew me. So even this fear that you're facing, God knows that there was going to come a point in your life that you're going to have some giants to deal with. It's going to cause you to literally fear. But can I prophesy? God wants me to pull you into the trading floor of heaven. Where you will trade your fear for faith. God says I have so much things for you to do. That I am going to kill everything false in your life. Can I prophesy? The things that are falls in your life that is suffocating the truth, the real thing. I am after those things. Many of you don't know that God wants you to come so near to him that even those that are persecuting you know, will begin to see the power of God upon you. Come on somebody, Caleb and Joshua were uniquely shaped, form and design to give guidance. Awesome, tremendous move of God was our um, 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 
I'm, I'm, I'm dependent upon them. They did not go back and look at the jackals that were saying, oh, we are like God's upper. We cannot go in and project, project this land. They did not watch the unredeemed culture that surround the land of promise because they know that all this land need is some shakers. Oh, yeah. So all these land need is some shakers, some people who know their God to arise and to begin to do exploit in the agricultural sector, the economical sector, all the sectors cannot prophesy. Many of you are in the wilderness. You are in the wilderness for months, years, and days. And all God wants is for you to honor God by allowing him to fix your spirit because you are his chosen people. Hallelujah. And God is not going to quit this one. This promise is not a new thing to you and you have been questioning it and God's are making it possible now for you to step into this promise what I am doing is reorganizing you come on somebody the road that you have taken before I've led you into a wilderness. You run ahead of me with some of the things that I told you. Uh, hallelujah. I gave you the, the word before I started the process so that you will not say your idol tell you or some prophet tell you. I tell you that you're going to be great. I told you that you're going to be a prophet of nation. I told you that you're going to have businesses, marriages, and properties. I told you that you're going to be author. I told you all these things beforehand that you will know the promise that is ahead takes strategic warriors who are aligning themselves God said cut the God said cut the, 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 the nonsense out stop taking shortcut to get to your destiny because if you take the shortcut and you will not process and you will not, will not prepare when you get that elevation when you get that promotion you will fail in the promise so decline from short cuts and go to the process for the promise will heal a great dividends once your process God says I will align you because two uncommon things will happen you will be the center of God's attention Tension because God knew where you were and he knew the process that you overcome to get there. Then the next thing God will do, he will do uncommon things to ensure that you are aligned to the favor at the right time. How many of you know that God is your destination? The road of earth can lead to two things. It can lead to victory. It can lead to defeat. That is why God wants his people to be saturated with his spirit to do the uncommon thing in this time and dispensation now god begin to give me insight into the new year he said this is the most Bless you that we have ever had in about two decades. God began to tell me prophetically that anyone that crossed over into 2020, you can just say, Devil, take the rest of what you're accusing me to the court. Because God is putting you in, hallelujah, the new season and He's going to speed it up the process. Prophetic speed is going to go up and everything you do, even things that were unredeemed, things that was locked up and held in another dimension. God will give you so much in insight that you will just say, devil just lose my stuff and people will be calling you hallelujah, people will be trying to locate you to give you stuff that they had for you because the time and the season has come and so God tell me, tell my people, I need your spirit to be aligned, do not be afraid of the giant that in your land they are intimidating you do not respect the flow of the hypocrites do not respect the flow halabashanda of the reptobate because they have already lost the promise the reason why you're under attack is because of the promise that is in you the reason why you're under attack is because God is calling your name have you considered so and so a man or a woman that love me that is fighting to stay 
right, irrespective of how many times you try to introduce the spirit of compromise, says the Holy Ghost. God is bragging about you. Rabakusha Dabakusa. I want to raise a prayer point. Hallelujah. Can you say after me, no matter what it cost me in this 2020, I must possess my possession. Kadusha Bakusa. Come on, tell the Lord to anoint you with the spirit that can redeem our unredeemed culture. You will not be limited by cultural barriers. Rekebo Shadabahai. For you're coming with an anointing of relevance. You're coming in anointing of acceptance. You're coming in anointing that will initiate a shift, a paradigmic shift over nation. You're coming with anointing that will invoke revival. You're coming with anointing that will cause people to break out what is inside of them. You're coming in anointing will provoke the people to thirst after God. You're coming with an anointing that will open the reservoir of heaven to undam the waters and the streams of living water to cause those dry places to be filled from bank to bank with the waters and the rivers of God. You're coming with anointing that will birth the ultimate revival that will transform nation, transform economy, transform presidents. You're coming with anointing that will cause you to step into a high Roman dimension of power. You're coming with anointing that will touch the heart of people and cause a rearrangement in the spiritual realm so that spiritual outpouring will come with the glory of God. You're coming with anointing. I call it the Elijah anointing. I call it the anointing that this is the power of God. I call it the anointing for shifting. I call it the anointing to slay, to slay everything that is false. Who am I talking to? The Bible says a in the, in the first king 18 30 to 40 that after this hallelujah when Elijah prophesied the shifting prophecy that shifted culture shifted thing galactically shifted thing planetarily shifted thing in the extraterrestrial realm shifted thing in the subterrestrial realm Elijah prophesied Heaven, shut up your mouth. Not one ounce of rain will fall until I speak again. Who am I prophesying to? Rekabo Shadaba. It did not rain for three years. Ah, Elijah was so endowed with the spirit of power he will confront the false prophet of Baal and shut them up rip them to pieces so that God power could be displayed in a culture in a nation that will invoke and provoke the people to turn their hearts to the Lord watch this word revival revival is up an ash God is reviving us before he take us in the promise. Why? We have been ostracized, criticized, the rattles rise. We have been bewitched. All kind of things has taken us. So God is dusting the debris of what you went through and is putting an apostolic revival anointing on you that will make you run like a renegade. You will run like a runaway train. You will run and leap over their walls and run through their troops. Can I prophesy? Shy. Elijah in the book of King says, Hallelujah to all the people, come near. God wants to display his power, so come near. And the first thing you're going to do is repair the altar of God. Repair everything about, hallelujah, getting in the glory dimension that was broken down. Repair it, Elijah, cry out. We must repair the altar so that the glory can come. We must repair, handle that which is broken the Bible says mm -mm -mm. Elijah said I need you to repair God's altar and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down and Elijah took 12 stone according to the number of the tribe of the son of Jacob to whom the word of the Lord has been given and he said come hallelujah he called each family out by name each clan out by name he said repair the altar because my God cannot just come on a place that is not conducive for 
Him. We have to prepare ourselves. Hallelujah. Some of us have to do more fasting. Some of us consecration. Whatever. It takes to prepare yourself to be able to see the God of Abraham and Isaac in this time. That's what you need to do so that you can go in and possess the land. God wants sign and wonder to take place so that the giants in your land will see that they are no match for you. Might as well they exit the promise and give you because you come to take over in the prophetic name of Jesus. Come on somebody. You need to step in the trading floor of heaven and begin to negotiate with God. Oh yes. God last year I didn't make it in. There are a lot of things that I thought would have come into fruition that I there are no way inside God. But God I want to re-establish my covenant with you. I understood the thing that caused me to fail in 2019. And by the special grace of God these things will not stop the manifestation the result of what heaven has for me as it relates to possessing my promise in the prophetic name of Jesus. I want you to know that many of you you are some fearic giants you have some Jezebelic giants you have some giants that are serpentine giants hybrid giants all kind of giants that are saying you, 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 you will never get that blessing, you will never get that marriage, you will never get that ministry, I am here as a prophetic voice dangerous and armed by the spirit of God, if you notice that this is the trend that is following you, step into the court of heaven, if you notice that Jezebel has her, her leech on you step into the court of heaven if you notice that Pharaoh is after you step into the trading floor if you know that Herod is literally squeezing the life out of you and is about to kill you, step into the spiritual dimension align your spirit with the spirit of God for in this dimension we are visited by God in the court for spiritual undertaking in this spiritual dimension where God himself will evaluate our cases and a thorough investigation will be done the covenant keeping God will tell us what we need to do to get into Shanda. some of us you need to build the altar in your church build your family altar where you used to pray with your children that altar has been desecrated because people begin to mind your own business and not looking about the altar of God. Some of you need the altar in your home to be consecrated. The altar in your churches to be consecrated. The altar in your nation, a prophesy to be consecrated in the name of Jesus. Some of you, you need your offerings to be consecrated. Some of you because action is what you're gonna get when you're offering praise God you're gonna get God even though he has so many other cases because what you're doing is in sync is in alignment to his perfect will you are going to get God to act Elijah said after he met the requirement of God he said oh Lord God of Israel let it be known today that you are God and that you have called me that I am your servant and you have sent me to turn the heart of these people back to you if I be your servant let fire fall from heaven and because of that we can always use Elijah as the God oh yes where is the God of Elijah that answered it by fire because of that one instant where Elijah caused God to lick the heaven and lick up the sacrifices oh yes he is known as the God of Elijah that answered it by fire come on 
Ahaya. Some of you need some fire from the God of Elijah to kill some giants in your land in order to bring back the revival in your home, your ministry, your marriage, your gift, and your finance, your health. Some giants of sickness may be in your health. Some giants of poverty and debt in your finance. Some giants of persecution and sabotage in your ministry. Some giants that is saying no to the yes of God in your life. God tell me it's time for extravagant breakthrough. And all he wants you to do is to align your spirit with him. Somebody said prophetess how do I align my spirit up? Be like John the Revelator. Shift the soul. Say, soul, you have no talking this. For those that are led by the Spirit, they are the Spirit of God. Uh, uh, um, they are the sons of God so you need to join your spirit according to 1 Corinthians 6 verse 17 it says he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him come on somebody if you want to see God move you need to join your spirit with the Lord's spirit if God cannot go in that place I'm not going because my body is an house of the Lord. Uh, my spirit is working in sync with God's spirit. I have a quantum interface with God's spirit so I can't do anything and everything. For he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. And when you're joined with the spirit, come on. He help you in the time of weakness. If those people were joined with the spirit of the Lord when they were entering into the promise like Caleb and Joshua, God will have helped them. The spirit of the Lord will help them in their time of weakness. So when they see the giant, they would not feel like a ghost upper because his strength made perfect where we are weak. And likewise, the spirit also help us in our weaknesses. For we know not what we ought to pray as we ought to pray. But the spirit himself make intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. According to Romans chapter 8 verse 26. When the spirit make intercession for us it literally lifts us up in the will of God. It causes us to join in sync with God's will because the Spirit has to go way deep into the reservoir and the recesses of the mind to pull out what is in the mind of the Spirit to pray for the saints according to the will of God. Am I prophesying? For we know not what to pray as we ought to pray, but it's the Spirit of God. God that make it intercession for us with groaning that cannot be uttered because the spirit of God knows what is in the mind of the spirit. Some of you, you have some affliction in your body that you cannot verbally articulate. And when you set out to pray, you realize that the spirit are bringing out the utterances of the things that you cannot even articulate by yourself because the spirit of the Lord move way down into the recesses of the spiritual mind of the saints to unlock the things that you're trying to say to your father but you need the help of the Holy Spirit to articulate this. So the Holy Spirit comes with groaning, groaning that cannot be uttered. And God understand even the groaning that cannot be uttered. Come on somebody. In the prophetic name of Jesus. So God says, I want you to apply to these principles. Align your spirit. Allow my spirit to carry you when you cannot carry yourself. Praying always in the spirit. God, I know you give me a promise, but I feel like I'm losing it. But God, I want you to encourage me. I want my faith to be built up like David. I need to encourage myself that I can stand. The Bible says, praying always in the spirit. 
praying uh, with all kind of supplication in the spirit uh, and be watchful for while you're praying things are going to be unlocked uh, while you're praying things are going to be undamned uh, while you're praying uh, God will give you a supernatural endowment of power to persevere in your supplication unto the end uh, God designed us to be true worshipers uh, so when our spirit is aligned with his spirit this means it moves beyond the soul realm it means it moves beyond the natural realm it moves even beyond the realm praise when you're aligned with God it moves beyond the realms of praise praise is just an introduction to a new realm and when you're this when you're a true worshiper and your worship goes up before God this means that God is coming to lick up your praise this means that the very presence of God will catapult your spirit, soul, and realm beyond what praises and worship can express. That's why when God spoke to the, Jesus spoke to the woman of cycle, well, he said, you know what? You are cumbered about where you worship and who you worship. But I say unto you, and that is prophetic unction, that the hour is coming and now is when the true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and in truth so that mean there must be an alignment for you to even be able to comprehend what the father is doing what the father is seeking hallelujah you must be aligned in the spirit can you raise this prayer point oh god oh god oh god i need to enter my promise but i need an alignment will you align me in the spirit align me God I was designed to be a true worshiper align me with your spirit means I want to move from beyond the normal means I want to move from just the soul realm I want to move into a realm of the supernatural I want to exit the soul realm this low plane Ali so you're going to submit yourself to the Lord Ah, and the Lord give us a perfect example of how submission can do to you. Ebo shata. And it refers to a submission taken from Ephesians 5.22. Wives, submit yourself to your own husband as unto the Lord. So when we're submitting ourselves to the Father, it's like a wife submitting herself to her husband. Because when she submit, she is under his covering. When she submit, it's man to fight for her. When she submit, Submit the anointing that is on his life protects her when she submit Rabo Shadabaha. Their prayers will not be ended when she submit. The glory of her husband will be her glory. Can I prophesy just like a wife when she refused to submit to her husband? Hallelujah! It can cause all kind of confusion, rebellion, all kind of mishap. But when she align herself to her husband, come on. <laughs> Borussia is like honey from the cone pouring down on them as they work synergetically to fulfill their mandate together as husbands and wives. Can I go deeper? Kadusha bakata didiosha brodosha bakasanda. But many of us, because we have been depending on people to talk to us, people to tell us what to do, where to go, the Holy Spirit is not getting a chance to fulfill this work that He wants to do in us. So so tonight I pray that this broadcast will stir you up. It will provoke you. I don't need this. I don't need that. Sometimes I need to turn off the TV. I need to come off Facebook. I need to find my one-on-one -on -one with my God. My soul need rest. My body need rest. My spirit need rest. I'm assuming that this rest, hallelujah, can take place if I find that place where God's power is a window. Hallelujah. That pour into me. All the different things that I need to accomplish what I set forth to do. Can I prophesy? And so God says the deep desire of his spirit right now is for us to be aligned. Come on, somebody say, align me or align me. I want to pray a prayer of alignment. 
God don't bless mess. If you discern that there's a lot of chatter in your mind, if you discern that your spirit is blocked, sometimes you cannot hear clearly what God is saying, it means that you need to be aligned. Hallelujah. All the debris, all the strangers that come in, the blocking spirit that come in to enter, the spirit from ministering to you, God's spirit from ministering to you, and a deepening on a large scale, you need to get these things out and come back in alignment. Can I prophesy? I need us to be blessed in this hour and I need us to come into this wonderful fundamental truth that what God has written for you, it cannot change. Heaven and earth will pass, but nothing that God has spoken will go unfulfilled. Your spirit needs to be activated. So I am going to pray the first activated prayer for you. Hallelujah. And I say unto you, Halabashanda. Father, as I come before you in the name of Yahshua, Hallelujah, on behalf of your children, I prophesy over them, Philemon 1 25. The grace of our Lord Yahushua be upon your spirit. Amen. In the prophetic name of Jesus. Father, I want to bless your people. I ask that you will come in our midst right now as we're going to invoke Makabo Shatta mighty blessings upon their spirit because they're going into the promise. Ah, Kado Shadabaha. Let me take the top of the hour, please. And we're going into the blessing. We are we are a chosen channel. It's a Come on. <laughs> I love the song. All I require for life. All I require for life. God has given me. I know who I am. We are a chosen generation. We are a chosen generation. Call for the show.
song, it is so prophetic. It's so epic. It's, it, it's anointed. The words are just coming right from the throne. Come on, God's God's people need to know who they are, what they're carrying. Some of us are carrying every stuff, every mantle. Can you like the video and begin to share this video on tonight under the apostolic prophetic team gaining access to the promise? No, we're gonna we're gonna do a prayer that will align the spirit, but we want to deal with some prerequisites. What are some of the prerequisites? It's, hallelujah that we need to gain access to the promise the promised marriage the promised ministry whatever it is that is a promise that God has spoken over your life what are some of the prerequisites that we need in order to uh, fulfill this great destiny number one prerequisite you must not negotiate with the devil. Can you write it in order for me to fulfill the, the, the blessing of the Lord to receive what God has spoken? I cannot pioneer with the devil. Hallelujah. To help him to destroy me. I must not listen to the, the accusation and the allegations and the discouragement of the enemy. Praise the name of Jesus. That's our number one prerequisite. Number two prerequisite to receive the promises of God. You must be Believe what God has spoken irrespective of what comes up against you. You must really believe what God has spoken irrespective of what comes up against you. Number three um, um, prerequisite. Hallelujah. You must exercise faith so that your human spirit can engage hallelujah with God's spirit hallelujah that even in the time when you find it extremely difficult to even believe God again because you have you're operating in faith and you allow your human spirit to be engaged with the spirit of the Lord the spirit of the Lord will begin to give you encouragement even when you're despondent and when you're despondent courage. Praise the name of Jesus. Prerequisite number number three, number four, always stay around people that are like-minded, that will give you whatever knowledge, whatever insight, foresight, encouragement to help you develop that indomitable spirit while going in to possess your land. So you need people that are really true life coaches, people that have the anointed spirit of God to encourage you to speak positively in your life. People that are positively speaking in your life will help your spirit to grow, help your spirit to be developed, to cause you to feel more secure as you go through the process to possess your promise. Prerequisite number five, there are seven prerequisite. Pre prerequisite number five, always stay on the part where you are processed. Do not take shortcuts. Prerequisite number five, always stay on the path where you are being processed by the Lord. Do not take shortcuts. Rabakosata. Hallelujah. Prerequisite number six, always leave halabashanda behind people who are not in agreement with what God is doing on you. Some of the time, look at Abraham, for example. He had to leave them down at the foot of Mount Mariah because there were people that would be saying, Abraham, you are a murderer. God tell you to offer Isaac. Oh, we may have to report you to some, some, some law enforcement officer. You're losing your mind. So, so always leave those people behind. You can always go back for them when the promise is fulfilled. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. And prerequisite number seven. You must be reading the word of God, memorizing the scripture, feeding your spirit with the word of promises in the prophetic name of Jesus. At this time now, I'm going to pray for us to be aligned. We need alignment. Can somebody say, align me, oh, I need 
prophetic alignment. I need my spirit to be aligned. My children must be aligned. My destiny must be aligned. I cannot suffer abortion in this prophetic season. While the wicked is after me, my adversaries are encroaching me. I'm seeing giants of different size and different culture. I am saying tonight I must be aligned by fire and by force. Number one prayer point I'm going to pray for us now. We're going to go into a few prayer points for alignment. It's imperative that you be aligned. Don't wait until 2020 come in. Then you're saying God I really miss out on you a lot because I was not aligned. When you look at the heavens, everything that God has created move majestically to his bidding. The, the sun shining, it's God, the moon in its course. It's your time to shine in order for you to shine and to possess this place that God has called you to possess. You need open heaven. You need the heavens of your ministry to be open. So you must be aligned. Your marriage need an open heaven. You must be aligned. Ministry. Can we begin to Activator, oh yes, that realm and dimension of the spirit. Can we begin wherever you are? Just begin to pray in tongues right now. We're gonna pray the, the anointing prayer of alignment. But before we can align, we have to uproot everything that is on assignment to misalign us. Some of us need to be aligned to a ministry, some of us need to be aligned to a marriage. We need financers for destiny. We need resources from people who have it. So we need a prophetic connection and an alignment. Can we go deep and so pakalabashanda? We're going to repent right now and pull down everything that has been out of alignment in our spirit. Come on. Our spirit is misaligned. We're aligned to a thing, to a geographical lo location, to a past relationship, to past failure. All of that misalignment in the prophetic name of Jesus need to be eradicated so that we can be divinely aligned. I'm going to pray now. So Father, in the name of Yash, the Messiah. I come after the order Kadushaba of Daniel in Daniel chapter 10 and Daniel chapter 9 when Daniel see that the time came for the blessing. Daniel went in fasting and prayer for divine alignment. Daniel was so strategic. He began to pray that all the sins, all the wickedness, all the atrocities, everything that was done that made God angry, everything that was done that caused the promise to be uh, suffocated delayed uh, he repented and so father I am repenting over myself uh, my own my ministry my children and everyone uh, that is under the sound of my prophetic voice uh, that alignment that they need God uh, it is going to come through you so we break our of every misalignment of body, soul, and spirit. Misalign connection that are not of God. Friends that are not of God. Relationship that needs to be severed. In the prophetic name of Jesus. By the power that divide the Red Sea. Oh Lord. Divide us. Cut us off from everything that is misaligning us to your perfect rabbi. We are, hallelujah, appointed to do great things in 2020. Miracle sign and testimony and wonders will be our portion in the following year. But we need to be aligned. Oh God, though that remember us, Anna, Sarah, and Elizabeth, remember our place, hallelujah, where we are right now and cause us to be aligned. We ask for an alignment to the Holy Ghost 
flesh. We ask for an alignment because you said that we and your spirit are one, even as Jesus was one with the Father. We prophesy grace upon our spirit, God. We ask for an appointment of anointing that will heal our spirit. We ask that every language and ability of the spirit that was criticize or casterize that cause up to fall up and to retrograde God we ask that those boulders and dark tunnels will be casterized break 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 that we might find our maximum potential in you hallelujah maximally hallelujah being impactful in every sphere of our lives father we ask Rebbe Shadaba to give us what is is written give us what is written command somebody I bless our spirit I honor our spirit I invite our spirit to come to the forefront and to give over the power of authority to the Holy Ghost I prophesy over our spirit that we are light and we are filled with the glory of God according to Isaiah 60 verse 3 your light hallelujah for it is written your light shall shine that kings will come to your horizon Holy Ghost we ask oh God that your spirit will search out our innermost being come on somebody pray of alignment we ask that in this place of submission that this submission will cause us to flow to a higher dimension and be raised up in power to meet all the blessing that lays ahead for us in 2020. We ask that no longer will our children lock behind for the word of God says that our children and us are for sign and wonder. Oh Lord, remember our children as well. Our mothers and fathers, our brothers and sisters and bring them in alignment. Spirit, soul, and body, we ask that every embargo that is tongue-gating, this, this, the, the blessing that is hindering the progress, be destroyed. Any power from our mother's house, arresting this move of God, arresting our alignment with God, we command it to die. We casterize that power in the prophetic name of Jesus. He calls Shaba, Lidu Raba, Santa Rabahaya. We ask that you will remember us. We receive divine visitation upon our spirit tonight. Angels of visitation, visit our spirit, visit our body, visit our soul. We ask for the alignment for assignment. Come on, Sing Kondalaba. Ilebaro Shakan Bosha. Alignment for assignment. Let the angel of death go forward and begin to kill everything in the land of promise that don't want to release what belongs to us, oh Lord Jesus. Let there be angelic visitation like unto Zachariah. We thank you for turn around and break through. That will disgrace the giants in our lands. In the prophetic name of Jesus, oh Lord, as you remember Elizabeth, as you remember Anna, remember Remember us. Advertise yourself in us. Move us from minimum to maximum. Make us a divine phenomenon. Rebo Shadaba. Let there be a greater alignment for the assignment. Move us from weakling. Give us higher power like an eagle. In the name of Jesus. Ayaba Shikondolobosa. We prepare ourselves for visitation. Now we open up our body, soul, and spirit for divine visitation after the order of the man that sit at the pool of Bethsaida 
Savior, let there be a visitation that will disgrace long standing problem. Let there be a disallowing a dis of any more embargo on our spirit. Now I want to pray for our spirit, our spirit, our spirit. Father, we ask that you begin to open rivers in our spirits. In the name of Jesus, we are available to go wherever you want us to go. We pray that our situation will begin to receive a turnaround. Like Jabez, as we cry unto you, let there be a visitation. That will remove barriers and darkness and release us into realms of success and virtue in the prophetic name of Jesus. I pray for our spirit. Let the resurrection power in the blood of Jesus come upon our spirit now. Come upon our spirit now. Come on. Come up on our spirit. Receive grace for divine res uh, resurrection of your spirit. Receive grace for divine alignment of your spirit. Receive grace for revival, grace for mercy, grace for prosperity, grace for favor, grace for marriages. Receive grace to come out of that cage. Receive grace to come out of adversity and affliction. Receive grace to come out of witchcraft burial. Receive grace to possess your possession. Receive grace to be liberated and to be resurrected by the power in the blood of Jesus. Receive grace to stand taller and receive your divine visitation. Receive grace for uncommon breakthrough, for your story to be changed to glory. Receive grace for personal advancement. Receive grace to be an advertisement of the power of God. To receive grace to live and not die in that pit. Receive grace to come into the palace. Receive grace for visitation and promotion as you enter into the promised land. Receive grace to move from frustration into success. Receive grace, grace, grace Makabo Shanda to see beyond and above Halabashata across and beyond. Receive grace to come out of bondage. Receive grace for your businesses and finances and marriages and health. Receive grace for mind-blowing testimonies. Receive grace that the shame will die and honor will take permanence. Receive grace Rabasheke de Boroko Sata Hey, Baba Shanda, as you shake the dust off your feet, as you begin to close some doors that has been killing the good destiny of God in your life, receive grace not to look back like Lord wife. Receive grace for the Holy Ghost to fight your battle. Receive grace for the Lord to avenge you of your adversary. Receive grace, Rabba Shadaba, for your spirit to enter a season of rest. Receive grace to this grace all the counselors of the demonic realms and their agent after the order of Ethophel. Receive grace. Hallelujah. Not to bury any one of your children. Receive grace to kill the plans of Satan out of your destiny. Receive grace to stand against the tempest of the enemy. Receive grace to, to war against Satan. It back up and evil supervision and diversion and demotion. Receive grace to scatter them by the lightning and thunder of God. What am prophesying to? Receive grace in the prophetic name of Jesus. Let me see who is online tonight. Wanna pray? Shaban Didi Bora. I just feel an anointing to pray tonight. Ilaba Dudu Shabakasanda. Receive grace not to die at the brink of your miracle. A prophesy you will not die. You will not be an experiment for satanic missile. Rikabo Shanda Baku. Sata. Receive grace to be celebrated by the power in the blood of Jesus. Manda bandido 
Ebo Shandaba. Receive grace to move in a new dimension of power. Feel God. Deborosa. Ikanda Daba Kusha Daba. Receive grace for miracle. I prophesy that the sun and the moon and the star will come in unison to your celebration. I prophesy that the sun is set at noon day. You're overtaken. Weeping and door for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I prophesy power to weep no more. I decree your wasting and destruction is over. I prophesy to your spirit. Wasting and destruction is over. You will flourish like the palm tree of Lebanon. I bind the stubborn strong man, delegating and enforcing our heredity and the camp demonic power to downgrade, to casterize and to sabotage your uprising. Rabbi Kushakanda, I begin to exfoliate from your spirit, evil plantation, bewitchment affecting your blessing and prosperity. I begin to remove satanic cataract from your eyes that you will see the promise. Makabo Shakanda Daba I prophesy to your belly, Kushadabaha, that any spirit of abortion that is in your belly that is confronting your destiny, I prophesy a shifting of that abortion and spirit. I command abortion to be aborted in the prophetic name of Jesus. Every witchcraft upon your glory scatter by the fire of God. Those that are working to frustrate you. Hallelujah will be repositioned to aid you huh? in this prophetic season. Huh? I speak favor and joy and peace huh? to be greatly multiplied over your spirit. Huh? I pray for you today. Rabba Katu, Rabba Kushedebo, Rabba. Any power that is on assignment to disgrace you, I feel I remove your name from the book of failure, from the book of disgrace. I command your spirit to align. Rekebo Shadabahai. I divorce your spirit from destiny killer, from glory killer, from glory black. I speak death to every unprofitable situation, every unprofitable relationship. I release you in the supernatural realm of God with the power to pursue your destiny. I command and demand a shifting I break unlawful Oh unlawful, hallelujah, attacks, I break even ancestral programs and devils that are assigned to terminate your destiny. I speak Africa to the gates of 2020. I command and demand that you open up so the glorious children of God will go in with the glory that they must shine. Rabba Kusakandada, I prophesy that the king of glory is escorting your spirit to live in the rivers of God where the glory of God will not leave you. I release you from demonic prison into your destiny. Oh Lord by God that answer it by fire subdue it of a power that is remotely controlling their destiny. Oh Lord let the glory of God promote their destiny, promote their spirit and their quota into divine excellency. Kadosh Let the anointing of greatness be poured on their spirit. Now their children, now their husbands and wives, their ministries and marriages and gifting and calling. Libo Shadabahai. We bind the operation of Atalia. We prophesy the Azusi of God. Excellency of soul. Excellency of spirit. We command the glory light in spirit and soul. Yabo Shadabakuliabasanda Ilebodo Shakanda. We command the glory light that make you distinct above your contemporary. We command the glory light to break out on the planning of hell that the planning of hell will sink and fade away. Rakabo Shakanda Bahaya. We 
release the glory light in every era of affliction. My God, my God. Hayaya man do shaba. I feel like praying. I feel like praying tonight. Ile bere shaba ida baku shada baha. Ile bo shanda baha. Ikondorobosa. I release the glory light against dark cloud. Evil gathering. Rabba shataya. I release the glory light of God to clear the path for you in the prophetic name of Jesus. I release the glory light of God to burst your rim open. I release the glory light of God to cause the departed glory to come back. I release the glory light of God over your star of destiny. I release the glory light. Somebody said the glory light. The glory light of God. Do you know who your God is? Your God is the glory light. He live in approachable light. I command and demand from the mantle of Yahushua the glory light. Come on. The glory light that will give you the power to run through troops, leap over wall, to promote you from the pit to the palace. Oh God, promote your children this year. Let them be in Dude, with the glory light of God, the spirit of excellence that promote Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah in the land of their captivity fall on us. The glory light, hallelujah, of the spirit of excellency. The glory light that promote us in the east, in the west, in the north, in the south. The glory light that wherever you are and come on favor overtake you. Come on, somebody. Come Come on, come on, talk to me, talk to me. You need the glory light to break you out. You need the glory light to issue judgment and decree against any power militating against you. You need the glory light to carry a heavy anointing. You need the glory light to frustrate the talking of diviners and make them mad. You need the glory light to promote your ministry and your children. You need the glory light to promote your marriage. You need the glory light to break out from minimum to maximum. You need the glory light to pull your root out of stagnation and retrogression. Now, you need the glory light for promotion and acceleration in realms and dimension. I feel power up in here. You need the glory light to fight the battle successfully. You need the glory light to advance. Hand up a shutter from bunk to bunk and coast to coast. From land to sea as the Lord enlarge your coast. You need the glory light for promotion motion and progress and success. You need the glory light for burning out into that place that you need to be. You need the glory light that wherever you appear, demon disappear. You need the glory light to move you from zero level to hero level. You need the glory light to move you from ordinary to extraordinary. You need the glory light to change your story like Jabez. From Mr. Nobody and Mrs. Nobody to somebody of promise Somebody of importance. I feel God up in my cushion. You need the glory light. Mm -hmm to remove the mark of hatred and rejection. Ah, some people want to put some label on you that even people that are supposed to stand with you all of a sudden they start to misbehave themselves. You need the glory light to move the mark of hatred, the spirit of rejection so you will possess your promise. These are the attributes that you need to go into your prophetic promise. You need need the glory light to amputate demotion, amputate frustration, kill the spirit of robbery, kill the spirit of betrayal, kill the spirit of sabotage. You need the glory light to leap in an accelerated pace of promotion. Cannot prophesy. You need the glory light to kill the foundational strong man, whether they are serpent or scorpions. You need the glory light to assassinate the assassinator of your destiny. Kill the killer. Stronger the stronger later. Kill the boa constructor. Come on, people of God. You need the glory light to live and not die. You need the glory light that no 
power will withstand you. God said to Joshua that no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. You need the glory light that wherever they called your name on ritualistic sight, using incense and candle and ritual and sacrifice, when they called your name, the glory light appear and kill them. You need the glory light that curses back from Fire, sickness backfire, death wish backfire. You need the glory light to locate your divine helpers. Who am I prophesying to? No wonder the songwriter says, Send the light, the gospel light. But I'm saying, Send the light tonight. Send the glory light to move us forward. Send the glory light to move us from Satanic cage. Send the glory light for the next level. Send the glory light that Jesus will be the center of attraction. Send the glory light to kill the plans of the enemy. Send the glory light to make our crooked path straight. Send the glory light for acceleration, uncommon laughter, breakthrough. Send the glory light to kill every anti-testimony forces. I feel God. I want to prophesy. Shanda Kuba Libando Shaba send the glory light for miracle sign and wonder. Oh God and God anoint our children with sign and wonder that they will operate in the miraculous in the name of Yahshua. For the Bible says in Psalms 102 13, thou shall arise, O Lord, and have mercy upon Zion for the set time to fear has come. Send the glory light according to your word. I send the glory light upon every single woman, upon every single one, man that needs to be married in this prophetic season. I send the glory light to supervise, regulate, and to reprogram. Hallelujah. Everything that the enemy take out of divine programming. I send the glory light to frustrate intruders. I send the glory light to kill anti marriage power. I send the glory light in your body, soul, and spirit. I send the glory light to remove demonic labels. I send the glory light, the glory light, the glory light. Lema loborusha malakati do dobo kosi ondo loboa ikanda di 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 bosha itaba. I wanna raise, I wanna raise, I wanna raise my hand and give God thanks tonight because some of you are coming into marriage in this season for the glory light of God is going to shine on you and that demonic garment that they put on you, that cloaking task, that covering task that they put on you, the Bible says, God says I will remove the cloaking task, the veil, the covering over my people in one day and so God is getting ready to take the cloaking task of you, that husband is going to locate you. Wife, you're going to be at the right spot. You're going to be wearing the right perfume. You're going to have on the right dress. Can I prophesy? Come on, begin to like the video and share it. I feel I want, to, I want to speak just to a few of you on tonight. Fire is on me to pray because it's time for alignment. Rabaku Sakande. I have a few testimony on the line. Persons who could not even qualify for a house. Oh, I have so much testimony of my sons and daughters becoming owners of their own homes. One, two, three, four of them has given me testimonies in this season that they are qualified to pick up their keys. Qualified to go there. Some of them going closing right now as we speak. Come on somebody. Because when you're aligned in the spirit, when you're aligned to the source, the source of prosperity, the source of promotion, the source of blessing, the source the one that says the blessing of the Lord make you rich and add no sorrow. The one that says I will go before you and make the cook part straight. The one that says I know the plans that I have for you they're all good. 
happen. Not one ounce, not one increment of evil is up in here. The plans I have for you are come to Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. They are good, 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 good. Good, 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 good. Can I shout it in the face of the adversary? The plans that the Lord have for me, they are good, 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 good. Not one increment of bad. Not one ounce of bad. They are good, good, good. Good, good. I am seeing the wealth of nation. Come on, I'm seeing the wealth of nation. Can I prophesy people who will be the recipient of wealth of nation? God says the season of lack is over. Send a proclamation. Write it on your fridge. Scratch it on a, a notepad. Stick it somewhere where you can remember that God has spoken that my season of insufficiency is over. My season of lack is over. God is introducing me to the place of abundance. God is introducing Introducing me to the place of increase. I feel God up in my soul. Hallelujah. Abundance. Overflow. Before I used to envision it. But now it's becoming a reality. God is giving me the abundance. The exceedingly above beyond what I can even comprehend. I shall lick, oh yes, not only suck the breasts of kings and queen, but this is my time of licking up honey, oh, in the name of Jesus, for the abundance of wealth and riches are being procured unto me. These are the people, Valora Pumlers. Accept wealth, alabotion. I'm going to call those of you that I'm seeing coming into a wealthy place. It's not negotiable from the month of February straight until December. Alabotion, that you will be accelerated into new realm of wealth, ever producing, not reducing. Cannot prophesy and legislate what God says. This is going to be a very large corporate prophecy because God said it's the time to produce and not reduce. Baby Nance Linton, open up your spirit to receive the abundance of wealth. I don't know if you own any house yet. Rekebosheta are the one that you live in. It needs some construction. But I hear the Lord said construction and rebuilding is your portion. For in 2020, I'm sending the harvesting angel. I'm sending the archer and the builders up in your territory safe the Lord. I'm building you up financially. I'm building your children and grandchildren. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Open up your spirit to receive the overflow. The overflow cannot go into a place that is not prepared with the capacity to carry it. That's why Jesus when he wanted the prophet Elijah to be a blessing to the woman, he said, make sure you go borrow vessel. God, don't come to me if you don't create the capacity to receive what I'm about to give to you. I feel God up in my shande sakanda. The capacity had to be created only when there was no room for the infilling. The oil stopped poured out. The meal ceased to pour out in the prophetic name of Jesus. I hear God said, training. Come with me in the training floor. Mm. Trisha Mackay, prosperity. 2020 is a year of prosperity as you align yourself. God says, get ready because I see you looking into avenue of owning your own house. And don't get too comfortable if God requires for you to own your own house. You got to move to a new geographical location. God has gone before you, woman of God, to chase out some people that are in some prominent place so that the budget will fit your budget. God is even give you a favor to buy a house, says God. I see a four bedroom, two bathroom coming for you. God says, make yourself ready. Get ready to start looking into the real estate industry because I have a purpose and a plan for you. I'm taking you out of poverty. I break it, says God. I break it, says God. Don't stand in my way and just get comfortable. 
to the norm, when I call it to live above the norm, you will no longer eat the crumbs and the chicken. Because as of today, I have qualified you and put you into a realm of promotion. And I said, promoted you shall be. I look at Charmaine Smith and I hear all oh, I hear all oh, and the mortgage will be conducive for your budget. And God says, I'm looking at even those that never think they could qualify to own a house. You had bad credit. Some of you have bad credit score. But God says, I'm reforming and transforming and realigning things. So the disqualified will be the qualified. I hear the Lord says, I'm giving this to you. And this will be my bond with you. I want to fulfill the promise that I made to Abraham. It is not fulfilled unless you get your blessing it is just partially fulfilled God says he will not rest until he make you a praise he will make you a praise in the land that you have been put to shame Apostle Oslin Faisley, wealth, distribution, wealth, wealth, wealth. Get ready to meet some elite. Rakabo Shanda. Get ready for the 10,000 and the 20,000, 55,000, 14,000, 7,000, 7,500, 1,500, 2,500, 1,800. I hear financial rest. This is your season of rest. You will not be harassed anymore by the enemy and it's not negotiable. God is arresting the arrester. God says they are on. Hallelujah. You're watching you. You have been watched on every angle. But God said just like all the sky. It in ray of house. I have placed to hide those that I'm speaking to, to for them to bless you and to release that which is necessary. I will not announce it. Some people are going to even come to give things that they don't want their name to be announced because they don't want the witches to persecute them. They want to just give it and go so that they can go back. Hallelujah and refresh and come again. Oh, Balikato Rabasata Makaya sinister get ready get ready you are becoming a landlady after today can i prophesy one two three bedroom house i'm seeing this also in georgia you will not be prohibited by affliction as a matter of fact god is taking out affliction out of your body and i hear in the spiritual realm affliction shall not rise again Tell my daughter, affliction shall not rise again. It shall not rise again, says the Lord. Shaniti Lewis, this is your time of power. God says, do not faint in the day of adversity. They are looking to see you back down, but I call you a possessor of great wealth. God says, wealth is going to work for you. Money is going to work for you. You will not be a slave to money. I have sent the release, and it's coming in unparalleled proportion, and you will have a testimony that will cause the onlooker to shrink and know that God is for you in the prophetic name of Jesus. I want to believe God with some of us that are believing God. Today is the 21st of, of, of the month of December. We just have a few days to go. 10 days to be precise. Let this be 10 days of accelerated power to collect the dividends that God have for us. Let it be the next 10 days that we will look up into his face and be all his beauty. Come on somebody. In 
the name of Jesus, I want to say to you tonight, it is going to be extravagant, don't you, whether the devil like it or not. I'm going to remind God of this night. Extravagant breakthrough. It's going to open up ceiling in the heaven. It's going to bust the ceiling. It's going to bust the doors. It's going to bust the windows. So you can receive revival. You can receive extensive outpouring of God glory that caused turn around breakthrough even to the colors art of people that wants to hold it in captivity I re-establish this as a superstition I, I impose it upon the fallen power of devils and I curse and bind and lock and block them from this move of God in your life that you may have an exceedingly great testimony in the prophetic name of Jesus I give you praise and I give you glory. I want to just pray one more prayer and then I'm going to exit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel fire, 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 fire. Shanda da da boro do do boko so kuria da da ba do 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 bo si. Brada mana da da ba ko si. I want to pray for someone that is sick and infirm in their body. This prayer is what I'm going to pray for you tonight. E de 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 boro do do bo ku sanda de de if the enemy think he can kill you with bloodline curses, witches and wizards can invoke sickness up on you so that you will die and not walk into your glory. They have a next thing coming because I prophesy and legislate Psalms 118, 16 to 17. I prophesy that you shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living and so Lord every sick body that is under the sound of my prophetic voice I stand in the trading floor in the court of heaven I ask that the court will be in session after the order of Daniel chapter 7 and verse 10 I thank you that you are Jehovah Rapha the healer you're the one who make all things new all things old I thank you for all that Yahushua Amashiah did on the cross for me, for those that are listening, for our children, even the unborn children. Rabba Kusaku, I thank you that he carried our sorrow. He carried our grief. He bear our pain. Everything that was legally necessary, Yahushua Amashiah has done it. And so I thank you so much, Father. But I recognize, along with your prophetic children, that there is an adversary that wants to afflict our body and to own us and to kill us. Literally, he wants to resist us. That all that you die for us to receive, even in the Old Testament, God in Psalms 103, verse 3, you are the one who forgave all iniquity and ill, all this diseases. Lord, I thank you that all our iniquity and any iniquity that is put up on us by witches and wizards, shangoman, demonic practitioners, rekebo shatabaku sata, I thank you that you bear all iniquity, any iniquity. According to Colossians chapter 2 verse 14, you blot out the unwriting of ordinances that was written against us. You take it out of the way, you make a show over sickness which is a principality and so Lord the iniquity that is speaking sickness I ask that it will be silent in me in everyone that is watching in my children in my grandchildren born and unborn ah, up to infinity I ask that the blood will begin to silent come on come on the blood to silent accusation silent affliction silent sickness silent them in the prophetic name of Jesus let the blood of Jesus silent everything that is eating on your body silent the voice of eaters of flesh and drinkers of blood silent silent 
silent the accusation. I ask that the blood of Jesus will deal with any personal sin, any hereditary sin, any transgression, any transgression that has opened the door for sickness and affliction in the name of Yahushua Amashiach Jesus, the anointed one. I ask that the blood of Yahushua will deal with bloodline sin and bloodline curse that will cause us to be afflicted. Lord, I come and I lay my life down at the mercy seat and I surrender my life to you. My children, life, everything that is in me, the 79 different organ of my body, I lay it down. I surrender it to you. For me, my children, those watching on this podcast and those that will come futuristically to watch the same prior Halabashat has brought them access to the healing power of the blood of Yahushua. Oh yes, we ask for an interface. Come on, right? Write this down. Oh Lord, give me an interface with Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha, who is my healer. Let there be an interface on every organ that has been afflicted. In the name of Yahushua, mighty God. Oh Rabbi Shanda Bahaya, because of this prayer now, Lord, I ask that every accusation against my health, their health, our children, our grandchildren health, every accusation and case brought against us, God, we are allowing Jesus to nail it, nail it, nail it to his cross. We ask and decree that all that Jesus has done will now speak for us. Any blood bloodline issue huh, that we don't know about that has been invoked to challenge us. Blood of Jesus speak. Blood of Jesus speak. We activate and unmute the voice of the blood to speak in the prophetic name of Jesus, the Son of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now we ask the Holy Spirit and his anointed power to come and scoop up all that Jesus has done for us on the cross and executed in our bodies, in our health. We receive the anointing of the Spirit to be perfectly whole. For in Yahushua, our Messiah's name, I pray. The Holy Spirit um, just want me to, know, to tell you tonight that you have been unlocked. If you notice that the team tonight is gaining access to the promise. And there is no access that will be given to you without a fight. Paul says, an effectual door has been opened unto me. But there are many adversaries. So you will never ever go into the promise without fight. So get ready now to possess your possession. Now let me see those. I'm looking on the broadcast that this word is like an on-time word to you. Um, confirming some things that God says to you over a period of time and you've been processing these things in your mind. Um, this kind of broadcast is like it's unlocking some things and you are identifying some things as well. The reason why I say that on tonight, if you're one of the ones that um, um, this word is like ministering to you, I want you to write on the broadcast, I am one of the ones. Because I am going to join my faith synergetically with your faith in holy synchronicity to the will of Yahushua Amashaya. And I am going back to the court, Halibo Shanda of heaven, for this to be unlocked. And people of God, don't be, um, don't be just um, writing, I am one of the one. But when you say, I am one of the one, be a little elaborate but by saying, my children too, everything that come out from, from me, we are we we are we are positioned 
for this kind of breakthrough, prophetess. Everything that comes out of me. You see, I've been in this warfare for a long time. So I am one of the ones, and I'm including my children, prophetess, that as you step into the court of heaven to unlock what God says belong to us from the courts, <laughs> no power can block it anymore. We will, within days, start to see all kind of manifestation. I am giving some of you seven days, ten days to the 31st of this month to begin to see channels unblocked, the wells and dams, lost blessing be restored, confiscated breakthrough be restored. Many of us will be given another time to be um to receive something that we lost. Say, for example, you meet an important appointment because the devil was just persecuting you. You lost that moment because God is a God of time and season. Even those times and seasons that were blocked, lost, aborted, sabotaged, one thing or another happened that you did not get to fulfill whatever God had planned in that prophetic time and season. If I be a prophet of God, ordained by God, empowered by God to speak this word, I am prophesying and legislated that those time and season will be restored in the prophetic name of Yahushua, Jesus, the anointed one. And so I want to go back to the court of heaven because I smell, I, 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 can, I can call you out, I can call you out, I see 38 of you right now under the sound of my voice that before the end of February, major things will be happening before the end of February 2020. I am here in February. I'm here in the 14th of February. Halabashanda, the 8th of February. I'm here in uh, alignment to a particular person. It's going to bring you some great doors of, of, of breakthrough and certain things that was diverted or held in prison. I literally see this huge snake around a storehouse in the realm of the spirit. I'm seeing a huge snake. Like It's not a python. It's more like an anaconda. This snake just wrapped himself around the storehouse of many people. And so you can appear. You cannot press, but what you need to do, because Jesus is a serpentine killer, you need to invoke the power of God. You need to ask God for even chainsaw, any kind of thing that he have in his divine arsenage. God send the angel with the chainsaw, send the, 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 the cutting and the hunting angel, send the, the, the bird of darkness, send the ravenous beach, send the engine of war, send the spear of the Lord, any kind of weapon to kill this anaconda, kill the python, kill the boa constrictor, anything that is forming itself as an embargo or as an entrance for me to get into my a place of blessing. You're going to ask the Lord to kill them. Hallelujah. Those non-human hybrid spirits that wants to frustrate you. They're confiscating all the blessing. They have them in another realm storing and you are here wondering where is the resources for everything that God has called me to do and it is stored up, laid up in another realm and dimension. Praise the name of Jesus. So I want to bring us um, to the court right now. In the name of Jesus, and we are wrestling for destiny's manifestation, for possessing our possession. The book of Obadiah tells us clearly that we will, Obadiah 1 verse 17 says that, hallelujah, we shall possess our possession. And so we need a broader um, perspective of, 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 of the things that God has for us. And we must fight, we must, be, we must not give up, even as Joshua and all these righteous men passed the creed and proclamation hallelujah as they intend to shape and to mold their self their mind their spirit to what god says and they don't care what kind of giants is there they don't care who was there before them God says, this land is going to be mine. I'm going to just get comfortable. Hallelujah. In knowing that very soon, you devils that have occupied this land, you are going to have to vomit, cough, spit out everything that you have 
confiscated from me and I'm going to really, hallelujah, enjoy my promise in the name of Jesus. So what the devil does many times, he interrupt our time, disrupt the timing of God. And sometimes because of pressure, oppression, all kind of battles, important times and season miss us. We are disrupted in that realm and dimension. As a result of that, we don't get the intended purpose of God at the end of God. So thanks be to God that we can always get restoration. God will always do a new thing. He will always give us back what the enemy has stolen in the prophetic name of Jesus. So we're going to go to the court of heaven one more time. And those of you, like myself, all of us, that is on God's divine agenda for promotion and breakthrough in this prophetic season, we must not, our purpose was, must not be aborted. The time and the season must not be interrupted anymore by any demonic or satanic power. Here we go. Father, I want to thank you. As I come back to the court of heaven, I'm interceding for myself. I'm interceding for my brothers and sisters, my spiritual sons and daughters, my biological children, nieces and nephews, aunts and uncles, everyone that is connected to me and my realm. Father, I ask that this long, rigorous process will be over. I ask for a realm of new release of wealth and prosperity and and destiny and purpose in the prophetic name of Yahshua Mashiach. As I stand in the court of heaven, I ask for the power to get well to be released upon your children, that your promised word will be fulfilled. You said that if we will remember you, that you will give us the power to get well. I pray for destinies to be aligned. I pray for them to be reverted, sink up synchronized with the will of God as it was in its original estate. Now any formula or equation that has to do with their bodily system, their, their mentality, anything in them that has been polluted by the enemy, that is rebelling against you, that is not synchronizing with what you're doing, we ask for your forgiveness, that the Holy Spirit will remove move it and that you will influence us to go deeper father we ask that the seven spheres of our society that many of us are called to impact in our society these seven spheres of our societies are, are, are fundamental to our nation as a whole uh, whether it's a religious um sphere that we're in our family educational business government and entertainment and media we're asking oh god that you will equip us and give us the power that we will be able to fulfill this kingdom assignment so from the court of heaven i'm asking for documents i'm asking for release of whatever is required to fulfill that which you have called us to do let the son of righteousness manifest with healing in his wing. O king of glory, as we assigned to this new place, we ask that because of what you're doing and ask that the nation will be gathered before you and that the nation will come and worship you, Father. In the prophetic name of Jesus, we ask that because of what you're doing in us, culture will be altered, moral standard and ethnic values and virtues will be adjusted and people will run to you and we will stand on this global worldwide stage to declare the decree and the agendas of our God and all God's people say amen. We sign this in every realm and dimension past, present and future to infinity and all God's children say amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you so much, people of God. I want you to like. Give me some more like. Come on, you can do better than that. Give me some more like. I want you to like 
the videos and begin to share the videos in your groups. This is the season. Come on, come on, come on. For us to be accelerated. Um, Stacy Trendelip and Do Shabbat Tiliboroko Sataya. Breakthrough is at your door and it's coming from an unsuspected source. God says, forgive quickly and this is the season you just forgive them as they come out okay no problem don't hold any grudge because i see that there's a breakthrough that has been altered before because of arguments and disagreement and the enemy is going to use the same kind of strategy to get you a place of disqualification every time god is bringing a blessing what the devil does he tries to disqualify us if he can disqualify us then we will miss the blessing that god has for us elaine broomfield also god is birthing in you a book i'm seeing a book on motherhood i'm seeing elaine as a restorer god is using you as a prophetic restorer of the breach you are going to be one of the, the, the instrument that God is going to use to resurrect generational blessing in your family, in your bloodline. The Lord said, Elaine Broom, Broomfield, I have called you as a trendsetter and you will never fit in. Needless you try because I call you to stand out. In, among the outstanding can you can you prophesy this again prophetess anna yes god called you sister elaine bromfield to stand out among the outstanding so there's no room for um ref, reforming to their standard because you are called to stand out and come on get ready for for authoring that book and god is saying why are you wasting so much time i see where the spirit of procrastination wants to fight you it is trying to amper in you you are a go-getter and for the last maybe three years i see where it's like the enemy wants you to to scale down and to you know retrograde to the back and you still have the open desire but they're drowning out in what's going on drowning out gradually can i speak a resurrection upon your gifting a resurrection upon your abilities your potentials all your vision and aspiration i synchronize them in the blood of jesus and i ask for a release of god's blood and divine timing wisdom and knowledge that you will increase in that in all its ramification so you can get the the tools necessary to advance those things that God has placed on the inside of you. She said, this is so true, woman of God, confirmation. I see that you're going to travel not very, very long from now, but I'm hearing that you will be among the business executive. I even see that in Elaine Bloomfield's destiny, there is a designer that is hiding there. There is a designer. You are a multifaceted, multi-talented person. And God is saying, she said, I am writing a book, auto bio. <laughs> so I see that. I see that. I see that. So it's, it, it, it is. It, yeah. So I see a designer in you. And this is multi-designing thing. Like, like I am coming on and I just feel to put on this like a thing and, and just, throw, just throw it in on. With, with, with my outfit and it, was, it didn't even come together I just feel like just throw it in there and I, and I like the look that it gave me something classy something different the Lord has given you that kind of excellency of um, um spirit and um you know how to coordinate thing you're a very team player good team player you're a good coordinator and God says to me that inside of you lies a lot of creative abilities and one of them is designing so I see a stream of new thing coming out of you that's gonna take um another turn in the clothing and textile clothing and textile industry i don't know i'm just seeing like people working for you clothing and textile industry sometimes you may find a particular piece of clothes that is very interesting to you woman of god and you are trying like if there's a way i could preserve this if there's a way uh 
if there's a way I could preserve this. So God is going to um, impress on you that you need to maybe start a business where you employ people um, to do certain kind of fabric uh, designing and um, um, that kind of thing. I see that fashion is in you and it's going to come to the forefront. We give God praise and glory in the prophetic name of Yahushua. Now with that, I want to bring tonight's broadcast to a close. And as always, it's always a blessing to come on and just to be used by God in such a humble way. To bless God's people, to encourage, to exalt us in the things of the kingdom. I am Prophetess Anna K. Wade, and this is the Line of Judah Prophetic Ministry. So until next time, shalom. I love you. Merry Christmas. God bless you. <laughs> Good night.